child raised on the Universal Monster movies, I never became much of a fan of the Hammer films. While the glorious black and white Frankenstein and Dracula submerged me in another world, the color Hammer films just look gaudy and cheap. These movies had an awful lot of talking. Yak, yak, yak. I can't just leave them. Not like that. Why not? You've told me often enough how he treats you. How you long to get away. He'll never agree to let us meet any other way. But my mother... She married him, didn't she? She's also my mother. And what kind of a Frankenstein monster is that? He just looks like some dude. But there's always an exception. And in this case, it's Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires. A mashup of Hammer and Run Run Shaw. Not just my favorite Hammer film, but one of my favorite horror films of all time. Movie opens with a Chinese priest, making the trek all the way to Transylvania to humble himself before the mighty Dracula. Who dares to disturb the sanctity of Dracula? For some reason, Christopher Lee doesn't play Dracula in this movie. Maybe it isn't supposed to take place in the same continuity as the other Hammer Dracula movies. Or maybe he just wanted too much money. The priest explains the seven golden vampires, who once ruled the peasants with an iron fist, haven't been cutting it lately. And now everybody is living their lives happily, doing whatever they want. He asked Dracula to come back to China with him to start kicking ass and taking names. Dracula takes over the priest's body, which is great, because it means we can ditch the subtitles and have everybody speak in English. The immortal power of Count Dracula. Just like the title suggests, the movie doesn't limit itself to just one boring Frankenstein monster or mummy, but gives us seven golden mask-wearing vampires, who know Kung Fu, are deadly with a sword, and have an entire army of the undead under their command. I mean, every inch of the screen is filled with monsters and horror action. Amazingly, this masterpiece has its detractors. A big source of criticism is the obvious phoniness of the clunky masks worn by the dead army. I think they look great. The faces never struck me as cheap, but stylized. The zombies are much more frightening when you can't see the actor's eyes. You're just looking into two soulless black pits. To this day, I'm genuinely creeped out by this image of a hundred newly risen corpses shambling and hopping en masse. There's no Christopher Lee, but Peter Cushing is back to play Van Helsing. Him and his handsome son are asked to employ their expertise in the field of vampire hunting to help the seven brothers, and their one sister, destroy the seven golden vampires. Actually, six golden vampires. One of them gets killed in the very beginning of the movie, so Van Helsing and the brothers are off to kill the remaining six. The entire expedition is underwritten by a Scandinavian millionaire. I'll finance the trip to this village. On one condition. And what is that? That you take me along too. I think a vampire hunt sounds exciting. Because we've just had to endure a lengthy scene of exposition, the group is immediately attacked by a band of thugs. The outdoor location serves the fight well, allowing for long shots of the entire group squaring off. <laughs> Jeez, nice princess hat, Professor. Meanwhile, the seven golden vampires, six golden vampires, continue to terrorize the village. They slice up the men and kidnap the women. After tearing their shirts off, of course. I'm always a little uncomfortable with the mixing of sex and violence. The filmmakers clearly intend the bare breast to be titillating, but it's hard to enjoy them when she's fearfully struggling for her life or being drained of her blood. It's kind of a boner buster. Do you think they could be falling in love? Oh, they're in this desolate place. I think it is most likely. Within the expedition, romance flourishes. And because we're talking progressive 1970s filmmaking, it is interracial romance. Van Helsing's Paul McCartney-looking son falls for the sister, 
and the blonde Scandinavian falls for one of the brothers. It's interesting to note the subtle differences in how these relationships are depicted. We see Van Helsing's son sleeping alongside the sister, arm wrapped around her, very intimate. But then, when we see the blonde with her Chinese lover, they're sleeping head to toe, and she covers him with a blanket, more maternal than sexual. We get to see Van Helsing's son and the sister kiss, but the blonde and the brother don't have any physical contact until after she's a vampire and they both have to be killed. It's like the filmmakers felt the audience would be more accepting of a white man with a Chinese woman than a Chinese man with a white woman. When the expedition arrives at the village, they go on the defensive, preparing for the oncoming attack by the six golden vampires. Three golden vampires. What? They killed three more during the ambush at the cave, so now there's just three golden vampires left. <laughs> like a beautiful porcelain kitten. Then suddenly you're a fighting tigress. It's incredible. Yeah, and one minute you're the rugged vampire hunter, but the moment they actually show up, you and your candy-ass father are cowering in the corner, leaving all the fighting to us. During the final battle, most of the seven brothers are killed. The sister, who the entire movie has been kicking ass and saving the Van Helsing duo, is kidnapped by the final golden vampire and made helpless so that Van Helsing and his son can save her, thus restoring their masculinity. Yeah, don't worry baby, it's okay, the man's here.